Hello, it's uh, Paul Beck with again. So this video is just a continuation of the previous two and I'm showing you some images of uh, you know what the what Greenland is looking like now. You know as you recall uh, just uh, just a few weeks ago um, Swiss glaciologist Conrad Steffen he fell into a crevasse, you know, he broke through the snow or snow and ice bridge and he fell into a crevasse, water at the bottom, and uh, his body was never recovered, you know, very unfortunate. But Greenland, you know, where that weather station is, is used to be very, very solid. But in the last few years, crevasses have opened up and, you know, the whole surface of Greenland is becoming more like Swiss cheese, you know, and it's becoming much more perilous for uh, people working on the the ice uh, sheet. So this is an example. Um, this is uh, not the location where Swiss Camp is, but it's showing an example. It's showing meltwater draining off into these moulins, these crevices that then go right deep down to some as far down as the bedrock of the ice, and then they go along the bedrock to lubricate and the the ice, so the ice moves quicker. Um, the whole ice sheet will accelerate in <clears throat> in speed. Um, years ago, I landed on a glacier in um, Alaska and by helicopter and walked around with my wife and three kids and the pilot. And you know, it, it, there was a lot of these crevices and things. And you know, it's perilous if you're standing near the edge of it. You know, you you you, you know, if you slip and go down there, it's game over. I mean, you'll probably disappear from the face of the earth forever. It's very, very perilous. To give you an idea of scale, here's a couple people here standing, and this is a whole meltwater canyon. You know, there's probably it's probably not just meltwater. There's probably been you know probably. You know, it may be at the surface and this ice is going this way, this ice is going this way downhill and it's pulled apart to open up a, a uh, valley, a meltwater canyon. Um, but, you know, it's, en it's enormous scale. There's two people, like I say, it's just, it's just mind boggling. This is, uh, these are rivers of meltwater carving in the ice sheet um, uh, near Alulasat, Greenland. And again, the water is turquoise clear this color because it's absent um, plankton for the most part. So, you know, the natural color of pure water is this turquoise green. And this is why in the Caribbean, the water is too hot for the plankton and microbes. So it's very, very clear and looks this sort of color, you know, similar to the color, you know, after you've cleaned your uh, toilet bowl for different reasons. Um, because of the chemicals you put into the water to clean your toilet in, in that case, not the purity of the, of the water. This is a uh, melting ice, forms a lake on a free-floating ice uh, jammed into this fjord, ice fjord. So there you can see, uh, you know, this is a big chunk of ice and there's melt water on the surface. Look how dark the surface is as the snow melts and as you go deeper and deeper, all of the dirt that's in the ice comes more apparent. If there's, you know, fires in the Arctic, the ash can go on the surface, making it darker. You know, because it's darker, it drops the albedo or reflectivity, so more light from the sun is absorbed, causing these meltwater uh, regions. And it's, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, this could be extremely deep. And, uh, you know, and if anybody's ever scuba dived on this, but, you know, if the water, if, if, if something opens up, if it's static, fine, but if something opens up and you get sucked in, then <laughs> forget it. So maybe scuba diving is not such a good idea on there. This is a lake uh, on this peninsula, um, and this is the Humboldt Glacier, Greenland's <clears throat> widest marine terminating glacier. I mean, the, the, it's nice to have people, you know, there's maybe a building or something or some truck down, I don't know what this is down there, but for, it's, it's really hard to get an idea of the massive, the immensity of the scale. These are icebergs floating on the fjord, and they're very angular and sharp because they're being created by calving of ice uh, from the, the ice shelf, right? It's completely different from, from sea ice. They calve off and then they, they, they drift away. Here's an iceberg floating in Disco Bay. 
Uh, the houses here for scale and, you know, it's just floating by. You can see this in Newfoundland, the place, you know, they call it Iceberg Alley. Uh, free floating ice. And again, you can see the color of the turquoise color of the water and some of the ice that's, you know, older ice, crystal clear because the bubbles have, have worked their way out. This is uh, free floating ice. It looks like, you know, the land's here, a couple people here for scale. You know, at first I thought maybe these were rocks, but these are um, parts of the, you know, on some of the glaciers, you can get these lines of dirt. Um, and, you know, it's because the glacier's scouring rocks as it moves. And, you know, it looks like these are um, just, uh, you know, that's the case here for, for those dark dirt laden areas. Inuit fishermen, um, you know, with the icebergs in the background. You know, and there, here, here is a large iceberg in eastern Greenland. You can see a boat there for, for scale. And uh, some ice here in a fjord, eastern Greenland. And here's some ice, some ice that is calving. And the colors here are just magical, if you like. It's just, they're, they're brilliant. So, but you wouldn't want to be near, near the base here because there'll be a mini tidal wave Call, uh, caused, created. Outlet glaciers, calving icebergs uh, in another fjord, southwest Greenland. About 400 million people would be f exposed to coastal flooding every year by the end of the century if Greenland continued to lose ice at the same rate. Well, it's not going to lose ice at the same rate. The rate is, is ever increasing, right? So uh, icebergs floating on the eastern coast of Greenland here. I mean, just beautiful contrasting of colors, beautiful photography here. Uh, meltwater lakes on the edge of an ice cap. I'm now I'm not sure if this is if this is solid or if this is just really, really dirty ice. Sometimes it's hard to tell. You know, as the as the glaciers melt more and more, it becomes almost like a pile of rock on top of the ice and you can't tell you can't really distinguish it easily from, you know, if it's sol if it's moving or not. Meltwater flowing, you know, look at the, like it's just laden with sediment. I mean, the erosion of the land is, is enormous. There's a couple more icebergs uh, floating. Um, okay, so that just gives you an idea. Now, now we'll get into the nitty gritty, but I'm gonna start with some of the uh, press releases first and then the actual paper. So warming Greenland ice sheet passes point of no return. This was August 13th, 2020. Okay, so 40 years of satellite data from Greenland. They looked at glaciers, how they've shrunk, okay? And uh, so the, the scientific paper came out in Nature Communications, Earth and the Environment. Greenland's glaciers have passed a tipping point. So the snowfall that replenishes the ice sheet each year can't keep up with the ice that's flowing into the ocean from the glaci glaciers. So they studied the ice discharge an accumulation and to get the mass balance. And they, they looked at um, 200 large glaciers draining into the ocean around Greenland um, and the amount of snowfall each year. And during the 1980s and 90s, snow gain, snow gain through accumulation and ice melted or calved from glaciers were mostly in balance, okay? So there was no net mass loss. The ice sheet was intact. Ice sheets generally lost about 450 gigatons of ice, which is 450 billion tons each year from flowing outlet glaciers, which, but that was replaced by snowfall. So it was a push. But, you know, now the discharge rate, the loss rate has gone way, way up. And the gain rate um, from snowfall, the replenishment rate has actually even decreased, when, especially when there's a blocking high over Greenland, there's no snow. Okay, so around 2000, something broke. The glacier started losing about uh, 500 gigatons each year. Snowfall did not increase. So the rate loss from glaciers, uh, the, the rate of ice loss from glaciers has stayed about the same, but the ice sheet, so the ice sheet's been losing ice more rapidly than it's being replenished. So, you know, um, okay, so basically, uh, you know, large glaciers across Greenland have retreated about three kilometers on average since 1985. It's a huge distance. The glaciers have shrunk 
back enough that many of them are sitting in deeper water if they're on a retrograde slope. So there's more ice in contact with water, so there'll be more, more melting from below, more submarine melting. Warm ocean water melts glacial ice, but it also makes it difficult for the glaciers to grow back to their previous um, positions. Okay, so, you know, the dynamics of the ice sheets have completely changed, and I'll show you the data from, from this paper. Okay, um, and of course this ice ends up, you know, melting into the ocean and uh, is a main contributor to sea level rise. Okay, uh, so let's have a look at the actual paper, the, the, the paper, okay? So basically some of the key findings are that, you know, the Greenland ice sheet is losing mass at accelerated rates. It's the largest single contributor to rising sea levels. The outlet glaciers are flowing faster, and that's contributing to this loss. The cause of the speed up and potential for future change is uncertain. How much will it speed up? Okay, so they use three decades of data. They look at the outlet glacier velocity, the elevation of the ice sheet, front position changes over the ice sheet, calving positions. Um, so they found that, you know, the gl increased discharge of glacier discharge was due almost entirely to the retreat of glacier fronts rather than inland ice sheet processes. So there was a remarkable speed, con remarkably consistent speed up of four to five percent per kilometer of, um, of retreat across the ice sheet. So in other words, the, the ice melt rate increased 4 to 5 percent per kilometer of retreat. So there was widespread retreat between 2000 and 2005, resulting in a stepwise increase in discharge. Okay, so let's have a look at the key figures here. So this is the discharge in gigatons per year from 85 to 2019. And you can see there's a seasonal dependence, of course. It melts you know, the, the discharge greatly increases in summer, slows down in, in winter and so on. Okay, there was a peak, you know, there was a peak here. Um, and, uh, but this is not the total mass loss from the ice. This is, this is discharge. So this is, the discharge is the calving of the ice on the ice, floating ice shelves, but also the melting of the ice from below. Okay, so you can see the behavior of it here. If you look at the annual mass anomaly, so now you need to take the, the, the discharge and the surface melt, and then you get the, the mass balance here, okay? So this curve here added to this curve gives you this curve, and this is a cumulative um, mass anomaly in gigatons of the ice. So, you know, since, uh, you know, 1985 to present day, uh, we've lost 4,000, uh, gigatons of ice, four trillion tons of, of ice here. Like just incredible and the discharge, th this is the surface mass balance. Okay, so this is precipitation, which builds up, you know, basically snow, which builds up the ice, but then there's surface melt and there's melt water running off, you know, or through the ice. Okay, so that's the surface mass balance component, the blue and then the discharge from the calving and the melting of the ice from below. Okay, so you can see it all there for, for Greenland. This is the annual discharge uh, versus the change of the, the weighted average of the cumulative front change. So this is how much the glaciers were treating in kilometers. And as you can see is that, you know, the, the more recent numbers here you know, this, the year is color coded. So this is more recent numbers are all much higher annual discharges and the front has retreated the most. And this is the rate of change of, of uh, each year. So some years are much larger than other years. For example, you know, this, this year was tremendously large here. Okay, so now this is key because where, you know, what's the spatial distribution of the ice loss on Greenland. Okay, so I'm going to have to cover this in, in some detail, uh, but you can see the region of Greenland that is discussed, and I'll talk continue in, in my next video um, where I'm leaving off here. Thanks for listening.